Thank you for taking the time to look at this short presentation of Catalog Controller. The key focus is on your business and how profit is made from catalog drops and collections, your online beauty store, social media, thus gaining more customers and team building. For this presentation we have based all examples using Oriflame products and any customer data is purely fictitious. What is Catalog Controller? It's software for keeping track of catalogues, customers, orders and profit, creating a professional appearance to your customers. The key areas of Catalog Controller are Catalog Rounds, Catalog Drops and Collections, Customer Orders from Catalogues Collected or from your website, Customer Details and Order History, To have a record of items on back order, unavailable items or returned items, Detailed accounts showing profit made and available funds. Facility to print order forms and collection slips. Listing of catalogues, products in catalogues, items sold and stock held. Collating items ordered from customers to form a main order to HQ. May be used for one or more catalogue companies, keeping orders and accounts separate for each company. The Dashboard this is the default screen that's shown when starting up the software. From here you navigate to other areas of the system as required using the menus at the top. This home screen will give you a brief overview where your business stands at the moment. Orders received this week. Details of catalogues and their performance to date. How many catalogues have been put out this week and how many collected. Approximate profit made from orders not yet processed. Catalogue collections due and deliveries due to date. The account screen is great for giving an instant overview of where your business stands financially. As well as listing all your invoices and commissions received for the current tax year, you can instantly see what money you have in the bank and what cash and checks you have yet to pay into the bank. You also have the facility to view the accounts for previous tax years. At the top left hand of the screen you have the actual profit made for this tax year and this is calculated from customer payments less invoices and with the addition of any credit notes and commission payments received. The system will also give you a projected profit for the year, which includes process orders not yet paid for and commissions due from your online beauty store if using Oriflame or your web shop if using Betterware. To the right you have the total monetary values of the business, showing any balance in credit notes, the balance of your till, that's basically cash and checks you have at home, and the balance you have in the bank. So along with any amounts due to suppliers, this will give you a monetary balance available and thus an overall company profit. Also, if using Catalog Controller for Oriflame, the system will calculate the expected loyalty discount that will be deducted from your order in the next campaign. And this is based on achieving over 100 business points in the current campaign. Orders achieved from catalogue drops or directly received from customers are easily listed. Orders to be processed, that's orders that you have received and are yet to submit to HQ. Waiting for products, orders that you have submitted to HQ and are awaiting the delivery to make up your orders for delivery to the customer. Ready for delivery, orders that you have indicated as ready for delivery to the customer and have printed out a delivery invoice note for the customer. Complete orders. Orders that have now been delivered and is classed as complete. You also have the option to list orders that have items on back order and waiting for goods to come back into stock and a listing of orders that had unavailable items on them. In a similar way you can list orders that have been received and entered onto the system from your Oriflame online beauty store or Betterware web shop. This gives you the option to list orders waiting to be dispatched by HQ and orders that you have noted as having been dispatched by HQ and given a tracking note number. And finally, a listing of all orders recorded as delivered to the customer. Catalogue rounds, creating rounds and assigning rows. 
Amend roads associated with rounds as you gradually reduce the number of catalogues required to be delivered to a road. Once a round is used in a catalogue drop or collection, the system will automatically record data against each road. Number of readers, number of customers, number of drops made, number of orders to date, number of lost catalogues, number of returns to date, and the value of orders to date. Roads are added or amended and then assigned to a round. House numbers or names are easily added at the click of a button. By viewing a road in more detail, you can obtain more detailed history about drops and collections. Houses have been asked to be removed or you have added to archive. Houses that have read the catalogue or are customers. History of drops made to houses and how many callbacks it took to retrieve the catalogue. Statistics from the drops. Catalogues collected, catalogues lost, catalogues read and orders received. By double clicking on a particular house number, more details about the drop and order history can be seen. Samples that you've given to the customer or reader, history of drops made to the house and how many callbacks it took to retrieve the catalogue and if the catalogue was looked at, details of any orders received. Catalogue controller gives you the facility to print your own day slips, callback cards and order forms for the different catalogues that you are running. For instance, we've got Betterware, Oriflame, Viva and British Basics already coded into the system. Callback slips are easily printed onto A4 paper and slips are printed for to a sheet and will have your distributor details and website on them, along with your selected day that you intend to collect the catalogue back. Callback slips are printed in the same way, four to a sheet, and will have an area for you to tick to say when you're going to try and call to get the catalogue back. Order forms may be printed for the relevant catalogue, again having your distributor details already printed on them. As the order form is not carbonated, there's a tear-off strip at the bottom for the customer to keep. They will also be getting a printed invoice from you when you deliver the goods to them. This will ensure that they have the full details of the items they've purchased and your contact details for the future. Once you have printed the front side of the order form, turn the paper over and feed it back through the printer so that the rear page is then printed on the back of the order form. Catalogue drops and collections. This is the heart of the distributor part of the software, where we create and control catalogue drops and collections from your rounds. This screen will show you which houses you've collected from, if a catalogue was looked at, if an order was to placed, to indicate if you were asked to remove them from future drops, to indicate if you were decided to archive and not to drop to them again, to indicate if a catalogue was lost, binned, burned or eaten, or whatever excuse they give you for not returning the catalogue. By not indicating anything to the catalogue, the system will know that you're going to try and retrieve it at a later date. Forming the collection list. We can print the collection list telling us which houses to go and collect from. So out in the sunshine or the rain, we indicate which houses we've collected from which houses have read the catalogue, any that have lost, any that we're going to call back to. We can indicate which day we're going to call back using our callback slips. We can put a little card through to say we thank you for your order. Or if we've constantly tried to get the catalogue back with no success, we can put a no longer going to deliver a catalogue to you card through the door. Once we have finished collecting our catalogues, we can then enter our results back into our system, indicating which catalogues were returned, which catalogues were looked at, which catalogues had orders placed against them. We can then tell the system the date that we're going to go back and try and retrieve the catalogues we were unable to collect, and then this will print a new collection list on that given date. Orders received from catalogue collections, customer requests or social media. Orders that have been created either from catalogue drops or entering via the customer screen are listed here 
and may be listed in various categories, orders received this week, orders waiting for goods, orders ready for delivery, orders with back order items, orders with unavailable items, and completed orders. Orders received. Order details are entered onto the system. On receiving an order, the details are added to the system and each item is added to the order. As items are added, the total value of the order is calculated and any items indicated as being on back order will be excluded from the order total. Entering items into the order are simply done by typing in the item code. The system will then bring up the item description and the catalogue price. There's also an option to add a discount to this price if required. Also, if an item is no longer available on back order, this can be indicated here as well. After entering an item for the order, you return back to the main order screen where you will see any other items that you've already added and you'll see the total value of the order so far. You also have the option to add any samples that you want to give to the customer and also the option to store a digital copy of the order form. This may then be viewed at any time by viewing the order and clicking on the icon and this will show a larger picture of the order. This also saves you having to physically save the copy of the customer's orders as it's now a permanent record in your system. Once you are ready to submit your main order to head office, the system can print a collated list of all the items required from your customer orders and this will show the product code, the quantity for order or if items are to be fulfilled from your own stock. Listing of items on back order. Some catalogue companies don't automatically add any items that are on back order on your previously submitted orders. So it's useful to be able to print a listing of items that you have on back order so that you can add these to your current order if they're now available. You may also use this list prior to ordering to see if items are now in stock and to contact your customers to check that they would still like the items. For companies that do automatically add back order items onto your order, it's still a useful check facility. On entering your item requirements to head office, if there are unfortunately any items that were on back order, you will have noted which items these were. By entering the item code, the system will list all the orders that you have submitted that required this item. You may then amend the order item to indicate that it's on back order, and this will then recalculate the correct order value for the customer and flag the order as having back order items. Once goods have been received from head office, you can start to form delivery notes and invoices for your customers. The system will print a delivery or invoice note listing all the items on the order and the total amount due. Also thanking the customer for their order and indicating explaining if any items are unfortunately on back order. There's also a tear off slip at the bottom to attach to the delivery bag or a bag delivery label or ID label may also be generated. Once you have bagged up all your orders ready for delivery, you can, can print a delivery schedule or manifest for your deliveries. This is printed onto an A4 piece of paper, indicating the addresses that you need to deliver to and the amount to be collected. You can then indicate against this sheet how the customer has paid you, whether it be card, cash or cheque or bank transfer. We then indicate against the order that it has been delivered and the method of payment made. If cash or cheque is selected, this is added to our till value and all other types of payment are recorded straight into our bank account value. Online beauty store or web shop orders are entered onto the system in a similar way to that of a catalogue order, entering the products required, but the order is automatically recorded as a web order and only the calculated commission value 
is added to your account's dashboard. At this stage, this is the value calculated from your default distributor discount percentage, but may be amended when recording the commission received against the order when notified by head office of your commission payment. Here, you also have the option to enter the date head office dispatched the items to your customer, along with the tracking note number. Once noted as delivered, you can also indicate this by adding the delivered date. By adding the products ordered by the customer, rather than just your commission value, you now have information to be able to contact your new customer if there are products that you think they are likely to be interested in. As well as being able to list your web orders from the standard order listings, you also have the facility to list the customers that have purchased from your online beauty store or web shop from the catalogue listing, as your online beauty store or web shop will have automatically been set up as a catalogue campaign. Customer Details screen A customer will be created from the information from a catalogue drop when recording that an order has been received from an address that is not already a customer. This listing shows the general details of customers, the date of the first and last order, the number of orders, the total order value, the value of returns and the total values of sales. On double clicking on the required customer it will show details of all their orders and this will show the drop number that the order was made on, the actual order number, the date the order was received, the date you delivered the order, the order value, whether they've paid for the order, the payment method and any returns made. Each order may be double clicked to view in more detail and this will show the actual items on the order and also by clicking on the digital image of the order you can view their physical order. Any items noted as returned will be listed on the system against the customer. Hopefully there won't be too many items showing here, but this will show the date the item was entered for return, the reason for the return, the head office return note reference, the date you sent it back to head office, and any credit note reference. So coming back to the account screen, we can see how easy it is to add supplier invoices with the option to save a copy of the invoice to the system. So on opting to add a supplier invoice, we can add the supplier name, the supplier invoice number and the date that we received it. We then have the option to say when we're going to pay it or if we're going to pay it straight away. We can also add the business points that we received for this particular order and then we can enter any costs that were associated to the various catalogue campaigns. It might be on this particular invoice we paid for additional catalogues for another campaign. So all of this is entered into this invoice here. We then also have the option to import the PDF copies of the invoices and associated documents. These imported documents may be viewed, printed or downloaded at any time by double clicking on the required document. If you're using a credit facility, when invoices are due to be paid, they may be paid singularly or more than one invoice can be paid with a total value being paid to the supplier. As mentioned earlier, there is the facility to record your commission payments against your web orders. This is where you also have the facility to adjust the commission paid on individual orders. Again, you have the facility to store the relevant PDF document with this receipt record. You have the facility to show all your customer transactions, showing when a customer paid and how they paid, be it cash, card, bank transfer, PayPal, etc. The listing of all products in the system. Products are displayed with their full retail price. 
clicking on a product shows which customer have purchased this item and we have a facility to see our top selling item. We have a facility to see stock held and sample codes against the main product code may be stored. All catalogues along with their featured products are automatically downloaded to your system from our server each time you start up the software. We will enter the next available catalogue as soon as it is available for us to purchase from head office. The catalogue listing will show you how each catalogue has performed against the catalogues purchased or given, listing how many are still available, being lost or now out of circulation due to damage or being given away. The listing will show the number of orders received, the value of these orders and the cost to get these orders, that's the invoices to suppliers including postage and packaging, and thus the profit made on each catalogue. Double clicking on a catalogue will give you more details showing which customers have ordered from this catalogue and all the products available in the catalogue along with any discounted prices. As this product information is available before the catalogue goes live, you can plan your marketing by getting a list of all customers who have purchased items in the past that will now be last time in catalogue or those customers that have purchased items before and these items are now on offer in this catalogue. You may then contact them to let them know this information. We also release training videos showing you how to use Contract Controller. As more videos are produced, these are automatically downloaded to your system from our server. OK, so a couple of frequently asked questions. Why can't I use the system on my phone? Well, phones run out of battery power, phones can get dropped and phones are hard to use in the rain. Having piloted the software during the winter months, it's quite often raining and touch phones are not brilliant in the rain. And the chances are that the phone will ring whilst you're in the middle of entering data. Pen and paper is much better to cope with whilst out on the field and this is quickly and easily transferred into the system when back home. Is the data safe? Can it be hacked? For your data security, the system is not cloud-based. The data is stored on your laptop or PC and can only be accessed by the application software running on that PC or laptop. To run the system on your laptop or PC, you have to enter your password to start the software. Isn't it double entry as I have to enter orders onto the HQ site as well? Well, there's nowhere on the HQ site to record your catalogue drops and collections and as to which customer ordered what product. Yes, you'll have to enter the products required onto the HQ system once you've already entered them onto the catalogue control system, but let's face it, you're only double entering data by making two entries onto the HQ site, the product code and the quantity. Catalogue controller will have already collated the products to order from all of your orders. Okay, so a small price to pay to get all the additional information about your client's ordering habits and the products that you have stalled. So the big question, how much does it cost and how do I get the system? Well, the cost is a leased system and you can either pay $4.75 per month, $24.95 for six months or $41.45 for a year. So how do you get it? By contacting us at Controller Software Limited on 0151 558 1964 or via email or through our website. We will then prepare a data file that's unique to you and to be installed on your PC. So, thank you very much for taking time to look at this short presentation of Catalog Controller and we hope to hear from you soon.